Hey everyone, this is Kevin from thechesswebsite.com and today we're continuing our coverage of the 1971 Candidates Tournament between Petrosian and Bobby Fischer. Winner of this match does go on to face Buddy Spassky in the 1972 World Chess Championship. Game 1 and 2 were fireworks. Bobby Fischer came out in Game 1 with the white pieces and got the victory. And then Petrosian came back in Game number 2 with the white pieces and got the victory. That was Bobby Fischer's first loss. He had played... 13 games in a row and won every single game up until that point in the Candace tournament. And then he did face defeat in at game number two. So getting on to game number three, Bobby Fischer again has the white pieces looking to start to pull away in the series. Petrosian looking to right the course here with the black pieces. So we'll go ahead and get started. E4, pretty common from Bobby Fischer. But then E6, we see the French defense, not something that Bobby Fischer goes up against all that often. Continues normal play here. D4, D5, and then after knight to C3. Black really has two options. Could go with the winner with bishop to B4. Or could also just go with the pretty standard classical, and that is knight to F6. He went with the classical here, knight to F6. And then bishop to G5, preparing for the pawn to come uh, E5. couple ways to really combat this. One is just to play bishop to E7. And then later you can bring your knight to d7, but decides to just go ahead and take this material here in the center of the board. And then after the knight takes here on e4, bishop e7, there is an exchange in the board. And then Petrosian decides to take with his pawn. And most of the time I, I see, especially nowadays, players will take with their bishop. They don't want to have uh, double pawns here on the f file, give up the support in front of the king if they decide to castle on the king side this does give up the bishop pair but both sides will have one bishop gone so it doesn't matter if they take here on f6 and the queen recaptures uh, you could then come knight to f3 here defending the pawn or if you wanted to just play pawn c3 you have that option as well but petrosian had other ideas he wanted to hold on to his bishop pair so he decided to go ahead and take with his pawn here on f6 Fisher continued with g3, preparing to Fianchetto here on g2. And this really, to me, looks like he expects Petrosian to castle on the queen side. And so he's just lining up all his material to point to the queen side of the board. This setup right here from Petrosian does not look like he's looking to castle on the king side. So this gives him some options as far as getting his knight involved into the game, uh, where it doesn't block off some of his additional squares for his queen. Uh, or his bishop, if he brings it over here to e2, also protects the pawn here on d4. So lots of things going into this move with g3. We have f5 attacking the knight. Knight comes back here to c3. And then a bishop to f6, just attacking the center of the board here. Knight to e2, as we talked about, wants to bring his bishop here and not have that blocked up by his knight here. Knight to c6, just adding pressure on the pawn on d4. There's kind of two ways to defend this. One is to push forward with d5. The other one, which is not nearly as good, but that is to bring the queen to d3. So if there was an exchange, maybe knight takes, then you could play castle to the queen side, and now you have an additional attacker on the center of the board. Your opponent has a bishop and his queen protecting it, and now white has both the knight and the queen and the rook attacking the square right here. But Bobby Fischer decides, yeah, I don't want to go ahead and do that. Uh, I still want to have the option to castle on the king side. He decides to go ahead and push forward with pawn to d5. There's an exchange in the middle after the knight takes. The bishop comes down to b2, and then bishop g2. And it looks kind of odd if you just look at this and say, wow, you know, this bishop right now is not really attacking anything, and this bishop can just take this rook here on a1. This would be a trap. This is not something the Petrosian should take here. If he does, the queen is going to take on a1, and it just has so many threats. It's attacking this rook here on h8. So we can go over the different variations of how Petrosian in this spot would respond. The first one is he can castle. Uh, king is not under attack here. It doesn't matter if your rook is under attack. You can still castle through this here. And so from here, we could see knight to f6. This is check. 
Uh, this is also being defended by the queen here on a one. Uh, so the king has a couple options. If he comes to g7, well, this is going to lose. This is going to be checkmate. Uh, there's no way to avoid this. Uh, doesn't matter you know, where he really goes, but eventually this will be checkmate. Now, if he doesn't come up, uh, if he comes to instead uh, h8, the other option that he has here, well, now bishop takes on c6. Pawn's going to recapture castle on the king side here, but just so many threats. As soon as this knight moves, okay, well, he's under attack from the queen right here. So can't really come out. We've already seen what happens if that happens. Can't come to g8 because the knight's defending it. This queen is defending the knight, so the queen can't really do anything. And there's no other minor piece to really get this knight off the board. So that's going to be a tricky spot. Now, if instead we come back and say, well, it's not going to castle, but let's just bring the, the rook to g8. Well, you can probably clearly see right away, knight to f6. This is forking the rook check right here on e8 as well. If the rook just swings over to f8, still a problem to deal with the knight to f6. This is check, forcing the king to move here. Even after you castle on the king side, you can you can tell this king is in a world of hurt. White can just attack it the rest of the game. It's in the center of the board. White has ample material and opportunity to attack for giving up the rook uh, for the bishop there. So if we come back in the board state, we can see not going to be a good move if the bishop takes here on a1. So instead, Petrosian decides to go ahead and castle on the king side. Bobby Fischer also decides to go ahead and castle on the king side, and then the bishop comes back here to h8. Recognizing, yeah, this rook here on a1 is a trap, and I need to start protecting my king side. Does not have as much protection as Petrosian would like here. Knight to f4, getting the knight involved into the board state. Also just trying to attack on the king side of the board. After knight to e5, we see queen h5. And you can start to see what Bobby Fischer is looking to do. He sees weakness. He's starting to attack. Petrosian trying to block that off as much as possible. Brought his bishop back here. Now brings his knight here to g6. And then rook to d1. Always want to get your rooks involved into the center of the board. And especially when there's a piece in between that rook and the queen... Just something that Petrosian always has to be thinking about, knowing that as soon as this knight moves anywhere, the queen is going to be under attack. Now, Petrosian says, yeah, uh, go ahead and move your knight right here because I don't want to have to worry about this for the rest of the game here. So after the knight moves, then we see the queen come down to f6, just really blockading most of the attack that Bobby Fischer could have here on the king side. We have king to h1 here, bishop to g7. Bishop to h3. Uh, a lot of moves trying to attack this square here on f5. You can see both the queen, the bishop, and the knight here are all attacking this square here on f5. Uh, so Petrosian recognizing that needs to get some of his material to defend this as well. Has his queen and his bishop. Now he gets his knight here on e7 to also protect this material. Rook here to d3, just preparing for the rook to come to d1 if he wants to double barrel here. Um, also adding a level of protection for his other pieces. Bishop to e6, rook to d1. Uh, bishop to h6 attacking the knight right here. Rook to d4, and then after the exchange, the rook's going to recapture here on uh, f4. Does not right now want to give up uh, the protection he has in front of his king by taking with his pawn. Gives double pawns here on that file. He wants to give Petrosian double pawns, does not want double pawns himself. So this rook here adds another layer of attacking this square here on f5. Now we see Petrosian get his own rook to d8. Bobby Fischer says, yeah, we'll go ahead and exchange material right now. And then Bobby Fischer makes the first stab at this square here on f5. Not the worst thing from Petrosian. He doesn't want to have double pawns here on the f file. He exchanged with his knights. Knight comes up here. And then rook down here to d5. So really, it seems like black has a better position here. In the late game, the bishop's going to do better if there's pawn chains on both sides of the board. The bishop can easily get to both sides very easily. If there's only pawns on one side of the board, knights actually do better. So in this spot, I would say black has a slight advantage here. But then after pawn to g4, pretty interesting move as I was analyzing the, the game, and Petrosian immediately just played bishop takes on f5. 
said, yeah, I'll, I'll give up my minor piece that has an advantage here and the pawn can recapture. Now this does give Bobby Fischer double pawns on the F file, but really if we come back, this pawn on G4 is not doing too much. It's gonna be difficult to advance on the king side. On the queen side, Petrosian has a lot of opportunity. He could push here on B5. He has three pawns to Bobby Fischer's two. All the actions over here on the king side of the board. The queen can't really defend over here on the queen side. And this bishop can easily defend everything that's going on over here. So I think there was some opportunity for black in this position to try to push a little more than just exchanging his better minor piece here on F5. But he does. Bobby Fischer recaptures here. Pawn to H6, pawn to H3, king to H7, just getting it off this open G file right here. Queen down here to E2. And then we see some repetition from both sides. Uh, it kind of looks after the queen comes down here that the rook can just take here on F5 because it's only protected by one piece. The queen's obviously not going to take here. That would just be a ridiculous move from black. But the rook can't also take. And the reason for that is queen to E4. And this is going to be a drawn game because black pretty much has to bring his king to G6. If he doesn't, he's going to lose material here in on this F file. But as soon as he brings his king to G6, then Bobby Fischer is going to play rook to g4. The rook can't move because it's being pinned down by the queen here. And the king only has one move. It's going to come back to h7. And then Bobby Fischer is going to play the exact same thing. Rook to f4. And then the king's going to come to g6. So, yes, can't really take the pawn here on uh, f5 after the queen comes down. So instead... Looking for another move, queen to e5. Could just take the material, but Bobby Fischer says, yeah, that's not really what I'm looking to do. Queen to h5, I'm threatening the pawn up here on f7. What are you going to do? And we just see some repetition back and forth. No one is able to do anything. And so after 34 moves, we do have a draw. So the first draw in the match, we do have Bobby Fischer with one win, Petrosian with one win, and a draw. But Bobby Fischer, first game that he has played where there was not someone with a win, uh, which is kind of crazy after 15 games into uh, a tournament with the best players in the world, that this is the first one that he's played where someone did not come out with a, a victory. But Petrosian's got to be feeling good. Uh, he first game came in, lost to Bobby Fischer. Everyone was probably pretty stunned. But then he came back one, and then he just played a very good game with the French defense and the black pieces. And he will come back in game number four, with the white pieces but thank you guys so much for watching uh, the coverage of the 1971 taking a look back at one of the more historic candidates tournaments knowing that we have the own candidates tournaments coming up here at the beginning of 2020 i thought it'd be nice to look back at some of the more memorable candidates tournaments in the past so thanks for watching i'll see you guys in round number four